He's like watching this, like I've watched it twice and I wanna go to a rodeo tomorrow, like I'm ready to go. And so just like the guys who are in it and all the guys text me just tough was so thankful. Just like thank you, bro, for doing it. Hi everybody. Thank you for listening to the Kick Your Boots Up podcast. It's so good to have you here for another episode of the podcast. We're in season two now. Can you believe it? Okay, so I watched a really cool documentary recently and I'm so hyped up about it. I had to have the creator of the documentary here on the podcast. So without further ado, you guys meet Cole Harris. He um, is the filmmaker, the producer for the documentary that's on YouTube currently called Journey to the NFR where it focuses on like the top eight cowboys in the cap rope in that headed to the NFR in 2023. And um, a little bit about Cole is, first of all, he's Ty Harris's cousin, so that's really cool. He's from San Antonio, Texas. He um, actually hosts a podcast as well, the Kingdom Vision Podcast. And um, he's a filmmaker, photographer, and creative director in the Texas area. So Cole, thank you so much for clearing your schedule and being on our podcast today. No, thanks for having me. It's a, it's a privilege to be on. Absolutely. And and I have so many questions about this podcast, like, or I mean, about this documentary. I am hyped up. Um, the second I watched the the footage of, of all of it, the whole entire documentary, I was like, okay, we have to get him on the podcast. We have to talk about this because first of all, your perspective is really cool. You had access to all of the rodeo guys through Ty, but then also just like your creative vision behind it is also really special as well. But before we talk about the documentary, I always get ahead of myself. I want to know more about you and the world needs to hear more about you. So tell us about um, how you grew up, uh, what got you started in filmmaking, all of it. Yeah, so I actually rodeoed until sixth grade so I grew up in the western industry grew up in rodeo um started as a young kid and then around sixth grade I decided to take the sports route instead of the rodeo route so when Ty and Braden Joel Braden uh decided to keep on rodeo and I was like I'm gonna play baseball and basketball and ended up going the basketball route um played a couple years of college basketball my freshman year of college at a small school so that was cool um but yeah I just I grew up in the industry so I'm very well like my parents uh we own like 400 acres of land my dad has a cattle operation he has a a show heifer operation going so they go to all these shows and San Antonio stock show Houston stock show um so yeah I just grew up in the western industry but I took this route and decided to go the sports route um and then how I got into videography, uh, I guess the best way to say it is, uh, so me and Joel Braden, me and Joel Braden, uh, you said the King Division podcast. We, uh, yeah, we started that podcast in 2020, and so basically, I bought a camera to film the podcast. And this podcast is about Jesus. We just talk about everything, Bible topics, Jesus, how Jesus changed our lives. So me and Joel Braden started doing that. And then when I wasn't doing the podcast, I would go outside. I lived in College Station at the time. I went to Texas A&M University, the greatest university in the country. Arguably. Um, for those who know. No, no, no. It's <laughs> it's like that. <laughs> but um, no. And I would literally go outside in College Station. It would be like raining. I would just film the rain. It was I was so bad. But I just bought a camera um, to film this podcast. And then obviously, long story short, film the podcast, began to, to grow my skills, do things for free from the wedding for free. And then in November of 2022, actually in June of 2022, it just, I got to a certain skill level to where it made sense. Ty was, you know, competing at a very high level at this point. And so I came out here in the summer, it was before the summer run of 2022. And I came out here and, and made a reel of him. It was fun. November of 2022, we came out and uh, decided, Hey, like, let's, let's do this thing. Let's, let's try to grow Ty's Instagram. Let's make YouTube. Let's try to start getting into this Western content thing. I made that decision and Ty helped me kind of navigate the whole thing. And so, yeah, that's a, I guess a thousand foot flyover of, of how I got into the Western industry and how everything started. So. I love your perspective on that. And I really think it shined through in the documentary too, that um, Ty is one of your biggest supporters. I think he was like always there to be your hype man. And then you, him as well. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, no, he, Ty, I, without Ty, I wouldn't be anything, you know, like Ty, Ty helped me. The cool story. I'll share this cool story. Yeah. So I went to NFR, 20, NFR 2022 
and uh, I'm filming in the stands at this point. No one knows who I am. I'm just I'm just filming in the stands at the NFR, and I filmed Zeke Thurston's 2022 uh, round 10 run, and then he ends up winning the average, wins the gold buckle, and Ty. So shout out Ty. This is basically the nature of our relationship. Him always putting me on, putting me on, giving me these relationships, connecting me with the right people. But he sends this reel I made Zeke. He sends it to Zeke because he has his number. And Zeke's like, oh my gosh, dude, this video is crazy. I've ne- like, and, and he loved it. And he ended up posting it and tagging me in it. And um, yeah, that was just a, that was a catalyst for me because Zeke, everyone knows Zeke. Zeke's one of the, you know, the greatest saddle bronc riders that's ever walked the earth. Greatest Cowboys that's ever rocked, uh, walked the earth. What he did in 2020 at the 2023 NFR was crazy too. And so I've had moments like that uh, sparingly, you know, one with Tough Cooper in January at Denver where he collabed with me. He was one of those guys who, you know, he roped with Cody Ole. He roped with Fred Whitfield. He's one of the older guys that, I mean, I always knew who Tough was and Tough ended up collabing with me. Ty connected with me with him. And, um, yeah, so I've had moments like that where just it just catapulted me and gave me this confidence to keep creating. So that is, you know, so cool to hear, especially the like you mentioned, Tough Cooper, like giving you the opportunity to pour it back into you to make your not only your business and your dream grow, but then also the sport of rodeo. I think yeah. that speaks to numbers about the Cowboys in general, you know, the industry in general. So that's really cool. Um, and before we talk more about the documentary, because obviously it's really cool and there's a lot of things to talk about, I want to know, I'm curious for you, what is your creative process, especially through this documentary? I mean, how do you piece things together? Do you have to go to it, go, you know, where's your, what, what's your process? Just tell us whatever you do. So do you mean creative process? Just how I made this documentary? Just yeah. like real, just, just, just in, in general. general, are you talking about the, in general? In general. Yeah. I, it sounds, it sounds weird, but a lot of my inspiration truly comes from my relationship with Jesus. Like it's crazy. When I first started the podcast, I started this Christian podcast. I did not have a lick of creative talent prior to knowing Jesus. And and it's true. Like I truly think the Holy spirit, Holy spirit ended up depositing in me just this gift to create this gift to just see um, music plays a big part in it. Um, When a big thing for me is when you hear a song, naturally there's segments to a song right and you get to like halfway to three quarters of the way in and the tempo always just rises and when i was when i was really young i would just be watching these movies and watching these reels watching these videos um where i'm like something fast should be happening here that the song is so good that some these there should be clips and you should be seeing something that you explains the way the song makes you feel so music has always been a huge inspiration for me um, and then for this documentary, I guess to just make it really practical, cause that was real vague. Um, there was a documentary about formula one racing. Um, it was on Netflix. It's called F1. I think it's drive to survive. And I was telling all the guys like it, this dream for me started in January. So January, 2023, it was a year long thing. I told the guys, I said, F1, 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 like, it's going to be crazy. We're going to make it. Hey, watch this documentary. I'm gonna make this one. I'm gonna make one like this for rodeo. Um, So, yeah, it's just a lot of secular. I think that's what makes me unique in a way um, to the Western industry is because I left the rodeo world for, you know, middle school to 22 years old. All of the content that I ingested, all the content that I received was not Western related. And so I come, but I also have the, the knowledge of the Western industry. I know sports. I competed in tie down roping till sixth grade. So I know the sport. And so bringing this fresh taste, this fresh spin um, from inspirations from other industries, I think just kind of helped make this documentary good, I guess. And I'm, I'm just glad people liked it. Truthfully. I was a little worried about it. <laughs> well, that's a real fear. And um, before we get into it, I'm going to take a quick break, but when we return, yeah. there's, we're going to get to hear more about it. So stay tuned. I want you to get up now. I want all of you to get up out of your chairs. I want you to get up right now and go to the window, open it, and stick your head out and yell, I'm as mad as Hey, everybody, and welcome back. We're here. We're learning all about the Journey to the NFR documentary by Cole Harris. Cole, I mean, you you said it perfectly in the first segment about um, that's just kind of how you got your vision from F1 and and how um, you wanted to bring your knowledge 
that, that you had of the sport into something that's created and made. And so mm -hmm. I guess let's just start there then because your perspective was unique for this documentary. First of all, I guess I should tell everyone out there, I'm going to pause back up. I should probably tell everyone out there um, just like how impactful your documentary was within even the first 20 hours, but you know, it's just mm. not even 24 hours. You already had like 3000 views. And every time I refreshed it, it was like 50 more views and everyone mm. was telling their friends. And I think what is really unique about you and this particular part of it is everyone is so afraid to cover calf roping. Um, it's true. You know, in rodeo, it's a support that not all fans like to watch. Let's just be honest. Mm -hmm. And so I love that you took the time and the boldness to step out there and show the talent of the calf ropers, first of all, but then also the talent of the stock and the luck of the draw and how it is a hauling race from time to time. And you you depicted all the different flights that the Cowboys had to take to get from place to place. So um, yeah. I commend you. It was really cool. But what was it like for you in the first, I mean, once you posted it, did you expect it to blow up the way that it did? Truthfully, no. And I also posted it on my personal YouTube. I've been building a Western, you know, YouTube channel that was uh, in connection to SSD West. And that channel has over 40,000 subscribers. And so I built that channel from zero to 40,000. Wow. But this one, it just was like a personal project, wasn't getting paid for it. So I decided to put on my personal channel. So it was no, I mean, this is just people, just word of mouth, uh, people posting it, sharing it. And I had you you would like to I would like to say I expected it to do this good because I just put a lot of effort into it I enjoyed it but you can't really expect it it's just like because YouTube that's why I love YouTube and content creating it's like it's so unbiased it's like it, it, if if people don't like your stuff they won't watch it and people love it they will and it's like it doesn't care who you are or what it is about you it's like whatever the final product is is what determines whether people watch it or not um, and so it's very humbling very competitive to make you know good videos but no i short answer i didn't i did not expect it to go this crazy and it it's it's surreal honestly you see all the comments of people saying stuff like best rodeo documentary i've ever seen we want to see one every year we want to see one for saddle bronc team rope and barrel racing i'm like guys i'm one man I, i'm trying but i need <laughs> i need some help you know it took me three months to make this thing you know what i'm saying but no, no i I love it. And it, it really, the fact that everyone else loves it makes it, you know, the struggle is worth it. So. Oh, without a doubt. And I'm so glad you brought that up. I'm glad that you've been reading the comments too, because um, it's good. It, whether they're good or bad, it's always good to read the comments and get the, the criticism and learn from there. But so far, everyone has been pouring support into you. They've been mm -hmm. so excited. And this has been something that the industry has needed for a long time. But yes, I'm so mm -hmm. glad you brought up what they were saying, because I want to quote Mike C from Ohio. His, I think the most, the, the best, my favorite YouTube comment was the best calf roping documentary I've ever watched. Great job. Thank mm -hmm. you. And so for him to say that, a random guy, Mike in Ohio, how does that make you feel that people are pumping you up and they don't even know you? Like that's what I was saying, just humble. I mean, you know, you as a filmmaker, you just, you're kind of creating for yourself in a way um, because it's such an up and down thing where, you know, you could create a video and everyone hates it or you create a video and everyone loves it. You kind of just learn to block it out in a way so we're like if i'm only functioning on the praises of people it can be hills and valleys because then i'm only as good as my next video and so once i have a better relationship with that i'm like okay like i create what i feel like i i, I want to create and i know what will i feel like will bless people and then the fact that then once you once i have a healthy relationship with that then i hear stuff like mike c says <laughs> i feel like i can have i can have an appreciation for it you know, truly I can feel grateful and like, there's no words to really describe it. Cause I'm just like, Oh my gosh, like these people genuinely love the thing I'm making. Um, but in a real way, I can only appreciate it. Um, once I have a healthy relationship with how to deal with the praises of people, if that, does that make sense? Definitely. No, that I totally relate to that so much because it's so funny as a team here, we'll work hours and hours and hours on something and it'll maybe get yeah. X amount of views. And then we just do like a funny something on TikTok or something. And it's like millions of views. Mm -hmm. And you're like, how, why? But um, no, that's, that's so relatable yeah. there.
Um, and I'm genuinely curious too, because like I said earlier and a, a few questions ago, um, that calf roping is something that not everyone um, focuses on, especially whenever it comes to doing a documentary. And that was the first one you picked. Uh -huh. So um, talk through yeah. that. What was life like on the road with them for the few months that you got to go on and through Cowboy Christmas and, and all of that? What was it like behind the scenes with the guys? Well, this may be controversial, but I picked calf roping because they're the rock stars, man. I mean, like I love all rodeo people. I mean, obviously bull riding from a non-western perspective if you're not in the industry bull riding is the, the main attraction um but i mean i in my opinion the pillars of the sport are like saddle bronc and tie down ropers and then you have i think the reason i say that not to dismount anybody else but it's like the roster of guys there's so many guys that have i mean just look at instagram hundreds of thousands of followers people just just flock to them and i don't know why um and plus, like I had, like, I love tie down roping because that's what my cousins do. So I was like, I'm not going to do anything else. Um, I, I wanted to make a mini saddle bronc one, but I just didn't have to do that. Um, but yeah, so what was life like on the road? Uh, crazy. I mean, one story was I was in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Ty and Brayden didn't do any good. So they had to leave, but I wanted to stay to film. And that part didn't make it in the documentary, but I needed to make it for a a client a project for a client and so i ended up sleeping on haven medjid's couch i was like hey i need to find a trailer to sleep in and i was like haven medjid let me crash on his couch i was like bro you're it's so clutch thank you so much um that was crazy there's one time where literally we're in vancouver canada we're trying to fly to Pinoca. This is on the morning of July 2nd. So this part is in the documentary. We're yes. trying to fly to we're trying to fly to Pinoca. I didn't have my camera out because we're running late. Like we're literally sprinting in. We get dropped off running. Well, my online check-in, it worked, but Ty and Joel Braden's did not work. So they're standing in line and this line's not moving. And we're like, we're about to miss the flight. So I'm like, hey, I'm gonna go get in line, save us a, a spot through security. And then when y'all get, it on like when y'all get checked in y'all can come hop in line with me well i'm in line and i turn around and i look and i see joel Braden and ty in a full sprint running the opposite direction and i'm like well forget me where are y'all going like they, <laughs> they didn't even call me they didn't text me they did nothing i just see him sprinting i'm like i just start running with them i just started running and turns out the security that we were in was international flights but we were already in canada flying within canada and so we were in the, the wrong line but it was it was such crunch time like we ended up getting to the gate we ended up getting to the gate and there's 10 people before we get like the doors closing after this 10 people when we walked up and uh they ty and brain were like yeah it was so tight like we needed to make it like this ty ended up winning like uh sixteen thousand dollars at pinoca if he misses that flight he doesn't make it to pinoca and so they're like, yeah, bro, we're sorry. It was like, at that point, you either made it or you did it. It was up to you. And so they just, they left me and I was like, well, appreciate it guys. I guess I'm just an extra here. But that was one of the crazy stories. Um, that wasn't when Chad ran know, into you guys so, too, was it? Or was that a different time? No, that was, that was, that was after or Shad was, Shad's was July 20 or June 29th. I'm sorry. Shad okay. ran into us at the airport June 29th in denver colorado um yeah that that flight ended up getting delayed so even if we we like like in the documentary you see it ty's running up and you just see him he's like like a deer just looking for a fence to hop he's like who am i gonna who am i gonna get who am i gonna get goes up to this person hey can i get in front of you it was wild and then chad hopped in front of us but <laughs> really crazy i mean there's stories like that everywhere and i could keep telling them but yeah Wow. Oh yeah. And it's really cool too. I don't know if um, you've ever heard the older guys tell about their, their times back in the day, you know, the old legends, but I know like at the pro radio oh, no. hall of fame inductions, they love telling stories like that. So it's really cool for you to be able to document it and help not only help mm -hmm. them remember everything, but also like help them remember and share their stories and get to relive it and watch it too. I'm sure that was cool. And that makes me want to ask you then too, what did Ty think after he had seen the documentary? Has he seen it? The finished product? Yeah, no, he saw it and he, he got a little bit emotional. He's like, man, it's, you know, this, this is one of the most fleeting sports. He didn't say this, this is what I'm saying. He's one of, this is one of the most fleeting sports and career paths I've ever been into. Uh, Riley Webb won the world championship December, what, 17th. And then a month later, he's in January during the 2024 season. 
And so that's a month to celebrate. And so it's such a, it's such a, sorry, my phone is going off. I don't know if y'all can hear it. No, it's such a, it's such a, it's such a fleeting sport. And so Ty sees the documentary and he's just like, man, like it makes me run back all those memories and just, I mean, he broke Trevor Brazil's all time cowboy Christmas record. And it's like the next week he had, you have to move on. And so this documentary, um, yeah, I just, I think all the guys got to appreciate it and just relive some of those memories. I got a call from, I think you, I don't think you would mind me saying it, but Peyton Bray, Peyton Bray is a team roper, but he calf ropes too. And he calls me, he's like, man, like I want to go rodeo tomorrow. He's like watching this. Like I've watched it twice and I want to go to a rodeo tomorrow. Like I'm ready to go. And so just like the guys who are in it and all the guys text me just tough was so thankful just like thank you bro for for doing it so the guys that are in it the fact that they love it just as much as the people who are watching it means the world because it's like what's the point of making a documentary and the guys who are in it hate it and then and it's like like that that's just what do you gain from that so yeah the fact that they love it so much it just it means everything so yeah and you did really do it to justice. Like you did it very well. It was so tasteful. And I can relate to you in the sense of I rode it longer, I guess a little bit longer than you did, but I stopped at the end of high school. And so here I am past college. I'm a career woman in in life. And I was still so inspired. First of all, I've never been a calf roper. You know, I tried breakaway roping, but like wasn't very good. Um, And so just like to feel so like on fire again for the sport of rodeo, it was truly what I needed. Mm. And I think that's why you got so many views because it was exactly what everyone needed exactly when we needed it too. Like, I don't know if what your strategy was for posting it out like when you did, but um, even, yeah, like just the 5,000 w- views in 24 hours or whatever. And then now by the time the podcast even gets out, like right now when we're recording, it's like almost 40 K, but then who knows uh-huh. like when this, by the time this makes it, how, how many views there's going to be. So um, well done. <laughs> well done all Thank the way you, around. Yeah. It's funny. This is probably going to make people more mad than happy, but the night before I posted it, I literally cut out like 15 minutes of the documentary the night before I posted it what because was I was sitting there? there and it was like, it was, it was good. And I loved it, but I just had too much in it. And it was just, something was off. Something was off. And I decided to cut it out. It was from Pialop, uh, Pialop, Washington, the Washington state fair. And I had interviews from some great Cowboys. No meat, no reason to mention them just to make people mad, but I did. <laughs> cut out 15 minutes and I think it it helped the story it just it just cut off all the fat it didn't really it didn't really lead into the eight guys it was just kind of like a random offshoot random tangent that didn't really lead to the overall story and so I just decided to cut it out but I heard people say like they never wanted it to end so the fact that I cut out 15 minutes is probably gonna make people mad but I had to I had to well now you have an opportunity to make it like a short or a segment of something else or yeah maybe I'll just release it it just said yeah. like the bonus content or something. <laughs> Never before seen. <laughs> Never Except before you heard about seen, it yeah. first on the Kiki Roots uh, podcast. <laughs> yeah, there, there's movies that they're called the director's cut, right? Yes. So it's like the ones that go in theaters and then the director's yep. cut. So like it's in it's the extended extended version. So who there knows if people want it en- <laughs> enough then I will release it. So. Yeah, no, for sure. And anyone out there that's listening, if you don't know what we're referencing, I'm going to leave a link in the bio of the the description of this episode so that you can go and see it for yourself. Um, So far, it's only on YouTube, correct? I know you're posting Mm -hmm. shorts periodically on social media, and I think that's really cool too to showcase the eight guys, which we don't, do you want to talk about? Do you want to spoil who the eight guys are? Or do you just want to leave that a surprise? Yeah. Yeah. So part one is Tough Cooper. Part two is Shane Hanchy. Part three, Ty Harris. Part four, Bo Cooper. Um, Riley Webb, uh, Chad Mayfield. Sorry, Chad Mayfield. I know. I'm trying to get the order right. Chad and then Haven, right? Yeah. I, it says it's, it's supposed to be eight Cowboys, but that seems like seven, right? Seven. Yeah. Maybe there's only seven. I would hate to leave a guy out. Let me look it up real quick before <laughs> before I yeah make somebody mad. But and maybe um, I I didn't pull the number on, I didn't make second. the number eight up did I did I make that up? There's eight parts. Yeah, so it goes Ty, Shane. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It goes tough Shane, Ty, Bo. Um, then it goes Riley, and then it goes Shad, and then Haven. And so, and then the last parts. The, the end. Part NFR. 
yeah the ending and so those are all the guys how many parts seven guys I, eight I parts have, i may have done it wrong yeah so, <laughs> no 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 because there, there's a there's originally a part eight that maybe the part i cut out so whatever yeah that's okay no but and we won't spoil th- it those are the ca- <laughs> yeah those are yeah. the cowboys that are in it great great dudes rock stars man so and I think for you too, I've seen, um, I've been, you know, doing media for a while now and I've seen those guys interview and then getting your perspective was, I think, different. So um, anyone that out there, anyone that wants to go look at look at it and is curious or maybe has already seen the documentary and is listening now, um, they'll probably agree with me when I say we got to see Tuff in a different light. We got to see Haven in a different yeah. light, Shad in a different light. And it was like we were just a buddy hanging out. Uh, you because you were a buddy hanging out at, at several of these uh-huh. rodeos with Ty, you brought that yeah. feeling there. So like obviously me, I'm not going to be hanging out with them. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so it, for me, it felt like really cool to get like um, I'm going to spoil it a little bit for you, but oh no, well. go for it. <laughs> um, so Riley Webb sitting for at the sure. trailer whenever you're talking, you know, asking mm-hmm. him questions and all of that, like no one, no one else, unless they're at the rodeo and they're part of the rodeo life, lifestyle and they're, you know, either using a companion pass or they're whatever their situation is. No one else really is going to get to see Riley Webb just sitting on his dummy at his trailer, you know? Yep. Um, and so there's so many people out there that really, really rely on and, and respect and appreciate your, your, what you've done with this documentary. So I, I wanted to show a, a big goal of mine was I wanted to show I, the Western industry it may it's what makes them special but it, what also makes them special kind of holds the western industry back in a sense and it's the fact that everything is polished and we want to make guys look as best as possible that's a great sentiment that was that was my goal with with the documentary too. i want to make these guys look good but to make them look good you also have to make them look bad in a sense um you have to show the ups and the downs and the downs don't look pretty and so my main goal was to show as much of the lows as i could um, I wanted to go farther, but it just was, it was limited with just me being one man. But yeah. I think when you truly see the downsides and like tough was out there, man, struggling and watch the documentary, see how he finishes. Uh, Shad's part, Shad's parts is crazy. Uh, him and Riley have some beef, you know, but it's the, it's, a, it's, it's so much leads to the character the develop development of their character and you can at the end of it root for them more knowing the negatives knowing the the struggles and you could just only yes. seeing the polished social media side of things if that makes sense so definitely and and I'll second that too because you didn't really that you don't see them in a bad light like they're not being ugly to each mm-hmm. other but you definitely see them in their slumps and through, and through this doc throughout this whole documentary mm-hmm. you see them when they're about to miss a plane you see them um, like tough Cooper, you just get to sit down and have a conversation with tough Cooper, um, that a lot of people mm-hmm. don't get to do. And so, yeah, yeah, you did, you did a very good job of like showing how they each talk about each other and they each are very aware of where they're at in the standings, who's, who mm-hmm. has to do good that weekend or whatever. But then at the same time, they turn right around and they help each other. They share mounts, you know, they share horses, they lease horses together. They, um, they help each other. They travel down the road together, all the things. And I think that's what rodeo encompasses as a whole. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, no, very, very good perspective there. Um, if anyone wants to see it, like I said, we can post, we can post the, um, link below to the YouTube link. Also, you can feel free to check out, uh, Cole Harris's Instagram. It's, by, um, at by Cole Harris and he'll be posting shorts throughout. He's probably, by the time this podcast episode gets out, he's probably already posted all the parts. Um, but you'll get to probably, see the whole, yeah. whole, yeah, you'll get to see the whole documentary, um, through and through and really it's just cool. So before we go though, I have a really, a question that I ask everyone on the podcast, Cole, and that question is, what advice would you give to anyone out there um, that, so it's, what, you know, what advice do you have for someone in your field? So for you, what advice do you have for anyone out there that's dreaming to start a passion project? So maybe it's not your, the, maybe they don't want to go in a film industry or whatever, but like yours was this passion project. So what's your advice there? Yeah, I would say I get a lot of DMs and questions from a lot of young people in the rodeo industry. A lot of people not in the rodeo industry about how did you get started? filming rodeos rodeo is one of the nation's biggest attraction is is the western rodeo um how do you get into it and my number one advice is always you just show up and you film and then you show up and you film and you start posting and then all of a sudden you'll just like it's this simple you just begin to send these cowboys collaborations hey this is a video i made for you dm it to them for free and 
everything runs through the athletes. Like the Western brands, we honor them and they kind of fund everything and they keep it going. But there's a reason why the biggest social medias are the athletes is because they're the one in their arena. And so when you think about the perspective uh, with media is if you can just build relationships with them. And the way I started was, it's just, Hey, I'm going to make free content for these guys. And if they like it, they'll post it. If they don't, well, I need to be better and I need to make better content. It's simple. Um, I had a, an advantage with Ty for sure. I think it, I think he, Ty helped me speed up my process, but I very much needed to be at a skill level to where it's like, okay, Ty helped me speed up the process, but I needed to be good enough to where I could take advantage of all the opportunities Ty helped me, Ty helped me get. And so, yeah, I guess some advice for passing projects would be just show up and start making the content, do it for free to show up in the rodeo, film the stands if you have to. It's like do whatever it takes to, you know, ultimately get your videos in front of the eyes that matter. And if you get it to the athletes and they start posting your content, then the brands will see your content and then you'll just have relationships with brands naturally. And you'll actually have an advantage with Western brands and rodeo athletes because you're not out there just trying to get money. You're just trying to, uh, make the best content you can and build relationships with people. And then all of a sudden you begin to be rewarded and taken care of as you should for creating your work. But if you go into it with the right motives, um, just to help athletes grow their social media, the help the Western industry, it, it, it works out for you. Well said. That's so, that's such solid advice. I really appreciate it. And I know a lot of people out there that are listening appreciate it as well. And Cole, again, thank you so much for taking the time to be on the podcast. And I wish you the best of luck in your future, even if you do end up shooting barrel racing or something like that. <laughs> Good luck with it all. I'm going to need the luck. It's stressful, but I would love to do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, like I said, you guys can follow, follow Cole on his social media. If you have any questions below for Cole, feel free to comment. Uh, we'll pass those along. As always, like, subscribe, share with your friends, tell everyone about this podcast, and we'll see you the next time you kick your boots up. Thanks for joining us on Kick Your Boots Up. I'm your host, Taylor McAdams, and we can't wait to share the next story of the West. Until then, feel free to like, subscribe, and leave us a review. Follow us on social media at Justin Boots to keep up with our next episode. And we'll see you the next time you kick your boots up.